All right, so next up we have the mesh. Uh, these are NMDs, uh, goes for Roshi's, Ultra Boost, um, pretty much any mesh based shoe. Mesh is kind of hard to do, you know, fine details on. It can also be kind of overwhelming and a challenge if you're just getting into customizing. The two things to do on mesh if you're not airbrushing, and for this particular instance, we're not airbrushing. So I would recommend a bigger, softer brush. Um, this one is a number 10 uh, Filbert, for those of you who want to know the styles. The other thing is your standard makeup brush that people use to put makeup on. Uh, it works really well. You kind of pounce the paint in there and it really saturates in there. The softer the brush, the easier it kind of goes through and penetrates into it. I'm going to show you both of those right now. Contrary to what I've told you guys on the canvas on the leather, you actually want to load your brush up a little bit more paint than normal on it. The key here is the pressure though. You still want to start off pretty light and just grazing it. The reason for doing that is I'm just coating the top layer we can actually see, I, I haven't actually went through to the next layer underneath, it's just kind of floating on top. That's one technique. The other technique is if you want to saturate the underneath layers, you can get like a pounce brush or like I said, the, the sponge. What you do, you, you, it's just like sponge painting. You take it with more paint on it and just start dabbing. And with this way, it's going to eat up a lot more paint, but you're going to get solid, full coverage pretty quick. So it gives it kind of a deeper, richer, you know, um, appearance. And keep in mind, this is on the first coat. So after you do this two, three different times, it's going to look like it was made that way from the factory. Nice, solid saturation. And uh, you got yourself a pair, you know, fresh custom mesh shoes. Before I go ahead and finish the front of all this stuff, I don't prefer to, to sponge paint or pounce the edges because sometimes it can, you know, smush past the paint, especially on these with the, uh, the styrofoam style sole. Take your, take your brush, load it up a little bit, and just, you know, 45, 50 degree angle, just kind of work it in there. Nice, slow, even coverage. And then what will happen is after you get all these edges done, they'll blend together, you'll never even notice the two difference, and it'll all look like it's all, all just fully saturated, you know, exactly how you want it to be. If you don't feel comfortable going up to the edge, you can always switch to one of these little micro brushes again and get right up to it um, with 100% control and no worry of screwing up and going over it. All right, so that's the first coat. Um, I showed you the brushing technique and the get paint all over your hands with the sponge technique. It actually looks really good for one coat. Let this thing dry. We'll hit it with another one to two more coats of that same amount of coverage and uh, that'll be pretty much good to go on to the next step. All right, so there you have it, your standard mesh shoe. Nice color, good saturation, um, took a few coats. You saw me use a combination of a couple brushes, the makeup sponge. You can pretty much use this as your building block to make you know whatever custom colorway that you want. Stay tuned later. We're gonna add some graphics to the next episode. And uh, until then. All right, we got our Van Skate High, high top here. Um, pretty much 99% canvas shoe. First thing again, you pick your color. I'm gonna start out with this gamma blue right here. The other main thing that you can use with the paint on fabric, whether it be canvas, mesh, t-shirt, sweatshirt, basically any sort of you know actual soft material textile is to use what they call a fabric medium. Preferred fabric medium is actually made by Andrus. It's called Too Soft. It comes in these little guys as well as the bigger four ounce. It intermixes with the paint. It guarantees that it's going to stay soft even if you've got that heavy hand on the paint everything stays flexible stays you know cleanable washable all the all the good stuff all right different types of brushes for canvas the shape that's all personal preference again i like the filberts and i like the angle ones i feel that on the canvas the stiffer the uh the bristles on the brush the the better the actual painting um you can kind of make the paint go a little bit further with it all right, just like I was saying on the leather, light hand, don't get super heavy when you're, when you're painting on the canvas. Again, your first you know, one or two coats might not look like how you have in your head that you think it's supposed to look. Your first coat's pretty much just like a wash coat. It's gonna look splotchy, fadey. That's okay, it's what it's supposed to do. Second and third coat, it gets better and better. By your final coat, you have the exact color that you wanted. A good technique going into the uh, to the edges, especially where you know where you've got your midsole meeting up with your fabric, is to kind of hold your brush at like I don't know 45, 50 degree angle, and kind of get right in there, and kind of want to just get like literally the last like I don't mean like half a millimeter, like just like the last like few little tiny bristles. What happens is the paint actually works itself down the bristles and kind of falls out where it needs to, right up to the edge, and that way when you pull the tape off later on. Super clean, crisp edge. Um, there's not paint glob in there. 
Same technique on the edge with this round brush, going at a little bit of an angle and just kind of let the bristles do their job. So when it gets to this point, you want to be really careful and kind of use that technique I was showing you at the midsole. Um, come in real, real nice and light. And if you're worried, get yourself one of the little micro brushes and you can come in here and actually do the, uh, the, do the details. And keep in mind, it's not a race with yourself. There's no reason to rush through this stuff because when you rush, you tend to uh, get sloppy and you make mistakes. All right, so here we have it. Two full coats, that's all it took actually on this, which is awesome. Looks really good. Um, the next step I'm gonna show you is, is still a good beginner step, but a little bit more advanced to give it that next level of uh, customization, and that's gonna be just a simple two, three color fade. Okay, so first things first, you want to uh, figure out where you want your fade to approximately go to. Um, I'm just gonna do this in real simple, since for now anyways, this is a blue stripe. We're gonna kinda start the fade right here, go up. Um, this was the first color that I did the whole entire base with, so I'm gonna actually skip that for now. Dip my brush into the uh, pale blue, which is our medium shade, and, and just start going and get it kind of all the way across. Fairly, fairly firm brush pressure. Now to start the actual fade process though, you want to soften up on your brush pressure. Um, so again, you're almost just kind of barely dragging it back and forth. Hold a little bit of an angle and just kind of fade it up. And uh, all you're doing is you're pulling from the paint that you've already got there. And as you kind of work it up, um, less brush pressure, almost to like if you're looking at this, I'm, I'm exaggerating it for you, but I'm basically I'm holding the brush almost above the painting um, that I'm doing. So it's just barely touching it here and there, which gives that nice gradient fade um, without using an airbrush, without using you know some sort of a, a medium in between. To get the fade too, you want to use a really soft bristle brush. Um, this is another, it's a number 10, a uh, filbert style. So it's got that rounded tip so you can kind of feather it out to get that fade going. But then what you want to do is work yourself down backwards with that secondary color and just go ahead and fill it all in so it has a nice even tone to it. It's the same exact thing, you just kind of let your pressure up more and more as you go up. Alright, so there you have it. Um, the next technique, it was a simple three color fade. Um, very easy to do if you follow along. It takes a little bit of effort to you know, perform your technique. The more you do it, the better you'll get. This is a good you know, finishing point if you want to leave it this way and color out the rest of the custom uh, with just some nice solid colors. Or it's a good, you know, good jump off to, uh, to go in and go back in and we can do some splatter, some details, some like little hand painting that we'll do in a later episode. But for now, that's what I leave you with.